Welcome to the workshop. I'm very proud to show you today our latest addition to the Piranha family of CNC machine kits. We have made a version that is all ball screws, so you have ball screws on X, Y and Z axis. We use 1204 ball screws that has very little flexibility and very high stiffness, so you will get a really, really strong machine out of this construction. In this video, Rasmus will go through how to assemble it and uh, it's a long process, it takes an hour or so uh, to show it, it's a little longer in reality. We hope that you will enjoy putting it together and even more so using it. I would like to uh, say thank you to some of our students that has helped uh, make the concepts for this machine and also Rasmus that has finalized the full design so this, this is what you see uh, here. Before we start the build, uh, let's just see how the machine is working. So we'll start out with the first page and now we have to put the screws into the linear guides here and then we'll later put them onto the C-beams. So we'll start out by grabbing some screws and this is the method I like to use where I put the linear guide on the edge of the table like this and then I put my screws along the table like this and also the T-nuts and this just makes it easier and faster to assemble this. So now I'll grab a screw, put it on the screwdriver, and then I'll put it into the linear guide and make it grab the T-nut. And I'll just turn the screw once or twice when it grabs the T-nut. And we only want to turn the screw once or twice once it grabs the T-nut so that it is easy to, put, to slide it onto the C-beam in the end. If you put them on too tight, you will have to loosen them, all of them, while you slide it onto the CD. So now we'll do this for all of the linear guides, including the Z-axis linear guides, and then we'll be back. So now you can see that all of the linear guides have been assembled with the screws and the T-nuts, and now we'll slide them onto the C-beams. So I'll grab my C-beam, and then I'll note from the drawing which side of this uh, C-beam faces upwards, and I can see for all of the profiles that it's going to be this side. Then I grab my linear guide. Now I'll go to this edge of the C-beam here, now I'll slide the linear guide onto it and I'll use my fingers to guide the T-nuts into the track of the C-beam. At this point we have to adjust the distance in one end and uh, what I like to do is find the correct distance and then I'll just tighten up one screw on the linear guide so that when working on it, it won't shift false. So now I'll do it for the rest of the C-beams.
So now that we have put the linear guides onto the C-beams and adjusted the distance in one end, now we'll have to use our spacing tool to adjust the, the distance from the edge of the C-beam to the edge of the linear guides using our spacing tool. And I'll show it on the x-axis, because the x-axis shows the technique you'll have to use on all of them. For the y-axis with only one linear guide, you will just have to use the spacing tool on this rail. For the x-axis, you'll have to use the spacing tool on one of the rails, and the same for the z-axis, and you'll leave the other rail loose for later adjustment. So now I'll grab my z-axis from on my x-axis. And again, I'll adjust this linear guide, and I'll let this one be loose for later adjustment. I'll put my spacing tool on, and I tightened this screw earlier to keep this distance. So the way I do it is I tighten the spacing tool. Now I'll press the linear guide against the spacing tool, and I'll tighten this screw. At this point I can loosen the other screw, and now I'll move the spacing tool to the next screw. At this point with the spacing tool I can now skip one screw and go to the second screw here. I'll tighten up this. and also tighten up the screw I skipped. And now I can once again skip one more screw, so I'll go three screws ahead, and I'll just keep going three screws ahead for the rest of the tightening process. And again I'll move over three screws, So now that we've finished up aligning this linear guide on the x-axis C-beam, we can now do the same for all of the other C-beams. And again, for the y-axis you'll have to adjust both of the rails. For the y-axis you'll have to adjust only one of the rails and you'll adjust the other one later. So now we have adjusted the linear guides that we have to. So on the z-axis here you can see this has been adjusted and this is still loose. On the x-axis this has been adjusted and this is still loose and these are also adjusted. So now we're ready to put on the linear guide blocks. And I'll grab my linear guide block and when handling this it's very important that the black plastic piece stays inside of it when it's not on the linear guide. Um, and also when we slide it on we have to make sure that uh, the black plastic piece connects to the linear guide when sliding the, the block onto it. So for all of the axes We'll uh, do two linear guide blocks on each rail, and these two uh, grease circles will have to point towards each other for all of the axes except for the z-axis. So I'll start out by doing one of the y-axes. The next y-axis. Texas. And now for the set axis. 
again, the grease shirts should point away from each other. So now that we've put on the linear guide blocks, we're ready to move on to the next step. So we are starting on page two now, and the first thing we have to do is prepare these double L brackets for the 2040 profiles that will be running as cross beams on our machine. So to prepare these, I'll uh, grab my screws and my T-nuts, and I'll just insert them like this, a little bit like we did on the linear guides. And again, I'll only thread them into the T-nut just once, so that it only grabs the T-nut, but it'll make it easier to put it, put it into the uh, V-slot profile. So now that we've prepared all of our double L brackets like this, we're ready to put them onto the 2040 profiles. And when handling these 2040 profiles, you should remember that two of them will be used as either the front or the back profile, so we'll put these aside. Now we have to put double L brackets on the rest of your profiles. So when putting on these double L brackets onto the profile, you should note that the double L bracket has holes that are towards, very much towards the edge and some that are far away from the edge. And the ones that are close to the edge should be the ones touching the C-beam. So the other ones will be the ones going in our 2040 profiles. So you can now see that the top side of the L-bracket will be coincident with the top side of the 2040 profile. And now, when I have the bracket like this, I'll just tighten one screw just to hold it in place. Now I'll put the other one on. And again, I'll note the orientation of the bracket. So now we are ready to assemble the frame of the machine. And I'll start out by laying my Y-axis C-beams the way I want them to be. So when doing this, I'll note which end of the C-beam I adjusted the distance in, so I can see for this profile it's in this end, and I'll just verify that it's also in this end over here, and I can see that it is. Now I'll grab my 24 profiles with the brackets that I prepared, and I can now slide the T-nuts into the C-beam here. Do the same thing on the other side. the next 2040 profile and do the same thing. Now we are ready to put the end plates onto the C-beams. So now we're getting ready to prepare the end plates. To do this, I'll grab my screws and my T-nuts. And like before, I'll put the screw in and make it grab the T-nut just with one turn. And I'll do this for all of our end plates. So when putting on these end plates, it's important to put them on in the correct corner of the machine. So you can see all of our end plates are actually individual. You can see these two are the motor plates. They will sit in the back of the machine. Um, and these are the front plates. Um, and when determining which end it should go on, on the C-beam, you can see that uh, there's a distance between the edge of the C-beam and the linear guide where it's longer than in the other end. And in the end where it's longer, that is going to be the front of our machine. So you'll need to put the front plates, the smaller plates, 
in the area where there is a larger gap between the ends of the C-beam and the linear guide. So now that we have determined that this is the front of the machine, because we have the larger gap here, we'll have to use one of the front plates. And to determine which one of it is, it'll have to be mounted like this, so that you can put the 2040 profile up here in the same plane as the other 2040 profiles. So now we'll put this on. When putting on these plates, we'll just have to make sure that it sits flush with the front of the C-beam here, and then I'll tighten up all of the screws. Now we're going to put the motor plates on, and again we'll just verify that we have the smaller gap here between the edge of the C-beam and the rail. So this will be a motor plate we have to install. And now for which motor plate? It will be mounted like this, so that the 2040 profile can run just like the other 2040 profiles. At this point we've put on all of the end plates, so now we're ready to put on the 2040 front and rear profiles. So we'll start out by doing the front profile. So we'll be doing this by sliding this into the T-nuts. So I'll be aligning these. And I'll just slide it all the way through. At this point, I like to just tighten up one screw in each corner, just to make sure nothing falls out. And again, I'll just tighten up one screw in each corner here. So now I'll also just tighten up one screw on each of the cross beams, just to the secure them. And now I'm ready to flip the machine. And for this machine size I'm able to do it by myself, but if you have a larger machine you may need to be two people doing it. the whole assembly, just so it sits better on my table. At this point I also want to loosen up all of the screws on one side of the whole assembly so that this C-beam can uh, move in this direction. Now we are able to adjust this CV back and forth. So now we are moving on to page 3 and we are ready to put the side plates onto the Y-axis linear guide blocks. So I'll grab my side plate and again I have to keep in mind what the front and the back of the machine is going to be. In my case this will be the back of the machine so I'll use this plate. And I've just loosely put in all of the screws. I'll just move it back and forth a bit, make sure everything runs smoothly. 
and then I'll tighten up the screws. And we're ready to do the other side. Again, I'll make sure everything runs nice, smoothly, and then I can tighten up the screws. So now we are ready to work with the x-axis. What we need to remember is to put two M5 T-nuts into the top slots of the x-axis. We've got to do this on the y-axis. So it's of course better if you remember this. Now I'll just grab a box. We use this kind of box to do this. Um, when putting on the x-axis I'll have to know what orientation it will have to go in. And again, this is the motor side. You can see on the plate that it has the hole for the uh, axle of the ball screw. And this is the side where there is less space than in this end. So this end will go in the motor end and the other end will go in the end where there is no motor. So now I'll grab my x-axis, and now I can put in one screw in this end. Now I'll put in one screw in the other end. Now I can start doing up the rest of the screws. So now that I've put in all of the screws loosely, I'm, a, I'm ready to tighten them. So now that we've mounted the x-axis, I'll just check to make sure that it moves smoothly. When doing this, of course, be very sure to not slide the linear guide blocks beyond the edge of the linear guide rail. So now we are ready to align all of the bottom frame, now that we have the x-axis mounted. So, as you remember, we have this side of the machine loose. So I'll actually be able to press this in and out a little bit. But of course, the gantry is what is defining this distance. So what I want to do now is adjust this profile and I'll just loosen up the screw I did up once earlier. Now I'll slide the x-axis all the way back and I'll just check to see if it moves smoothly and it does. And now I can tighten up all of the screws. Now I'll do the same thing in the front of the machine. So I'll loosen all of the screws. I'll make sure the 2040 moves freely. And now I can tighten it. So now we're ready to adjust the cross beams. What I'll start doing is adjust the distance between the cross beams here. And I just want them evenly spaced so I calculate the distance between the beams. And now I'll just adjust it. Now I can tighten the bracket to the C-beam.
and I will move the gantry so that it sits just on top of the beam just to adjust the distance between the C-beams in this direction. And now that it has uh, been adjusted in this direction, I can now center the 2040 profile. So I'll just feel that it sits the same way in both ends. And press that now. And I'll just push up on the profile while tightening the screws. I'll tighten up the remaining screws here. And I can do the same thing for the other side. So again, I'll push up on the profile while tightening. And you'll have to do this with all of your cross beams. And you can also choose the spacing yourself. So now that we have tightened up all of the cross beams, the frame is now assembled and we can move on. So now we're ready for page four. We're going to start out by putting these ball screw nut mounts onto the ball screw nuts. So I'll just start out with the short ball screw here. Now I'll do the rest of our ball screws. So now we've put the mount on all of our ball screws and we're ready to put the bearing blocks onto them now. So for these bearing blocks you should know what orientation they should point in. In this case they're going to point this way. And now I'm going to put the preload nut on the ball screw. And when tightening this I like to just grab a piece of paper and hold the ball screw. Tighten the nut. And now I'll do this for all of our ball screws. So now all of the ball screws are finished. So now we are doing page 5 and I'm going to start by mounting my end switches to my two 3D printed brackets here. Now we can put the PF10 bearing blocks onto the end of the ball screws. So now we are ready to put the screws inside of the bearing blocks in both ends. So I'll be doing this. And I'll also do it in the other end. Here I'll take the 3D printed bracket. Just put it on like so. And then insert the screws. And I'll do that for all of the ball screws. So now we're ready to mount one of the ball screws on the x-axis. So I'll just start by carefully guiding this end into the hole. Now that that has been seated, I can now place the ball nut in between the linear guides. And it's also very important to rotate it such that the screw holes are point, pointing out. Now I'll just guide this the rest of the way. And before tightening, I just double check that my ball nut is between the linear guides and that the screw holes also point outwards. So 
and I can start tightening up the screws. I won't fully tighten them, I'll just thread them into the side plate. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. So before we can mount the Y-axis ball screws, we'll just have to loosen one of these blocks from each side plate. So I'll loosen the front one. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now we're ready to mount the ball screw on the y-axis. So I'll start out by carefully guiding this end into the hole. Now I have to make sure that the ball nut holes here sit and point towards the outside. Now I have to move this axis backwards. Now I'll just carefully slide this in like that. And now I'm ready to do up the screws. I won't fasten them, I'll only thread them into the holes. I'll do the same thing over here. Now I can do the same thing for the ball screw in the other side. Now I'll carefully guide this end into this hole. And again, the nut should sit in between the two linear guide blocks and I'll make sure it point the holes point outwards. I can guide it under here and the rest of the way. And I'll start threading the screws in. Now that we've put both of the y-axis ball screws in, we can now move the axis forward like this and just make sure it slides nicely over the ball nut. And now to make sure that these two ball nuts are placed in the same spot in this direction, I'll just rotate this a little bit. Now I can slide the linear guide block all the way back and I can then tighten it once again to the side plate.
and I'll do the same thing on the other side. So now we are ready for page 6 and I'll start installing this X-plate onto these linear guide blocks. Again, I have to make sure that the ball nut sits with the holes pointing outwards like this. Now I have inserted all of the screws loosely and I remember that this top rail is the one that was affixed earlier and now I'll just fix the X-plate to the upper linear guide bearing blocks. Now I'll just push a little bit up on the bottom linear rail and then I'll tighten one screw. This screw will now determine the distance between the rails. Now I can also loosen up this screw and it, tighten it in the other end, just so it's easier for me to align the rail over here. And now I'll also insert the screws for the ball screw now. At this point, I can now slide the carriage all the way to the end. And now I'm ready to tighten up the first screw on the linear guide. Now I'll loosen this other screw. And now I'll simply go, just as we did with the alignment tool, and I'll tighten all of the screws on the x-axis linear guide. And I'm able to push the plate like this. You may need to move it back and forth a little bit to be able to do that. Now I'm ready to tighten this screw. And I'll just keep doing this along the whole travel. And in the end here I just have to move it backwards like this. And then I can start tightening up these screws. Now the rail has been aligned. Now I can tighten up the remaining screws. And now I'll just re-tighten these screws for the ball screw. And I'll just try to let it rest sort of in the middle. Now I'll move it all the way to the bearing block. And now I can see that I can rotate the bearing block a little bit. And now I'll just let it rest in the middle again, and I'll tighten up the two outer screws. Now I'll move the plate all the way to the other end. Now I can also let this bearing block rest in the middle of its rotation here. Now I'll tighten up the two outer screws. finish it off, I'll tighten up the inner screws here. And I'll just verify that the x-axis runs smoothly. Now that we've finished up the x-axis, we're ready to do the y-axis now. And I'll just start by putting the, uh, or fastening the ball screw nut to the side plate here. And I'll just move it a bit back and forth. 
to make sure that the holes line up. And I'll just loosely insert these. Now again I'll just tighten them sort of in the middle of this movement. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now that I've put in all of the screws, I need to move both axes all the way to the front first. Or if you were all the way to the back, then you need to move it to the back. But we just need to tighten up the bearing blocks in both ends. And we need to be two people to do this. Now I'll just tighten up the outer screws. And now we have to move the axis all the way to the back. Now I'm again ready to tighten up the outer screws here. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And now we will once again move the air cage a little bit forward. Now I can tighten up the remaining screws. Now once again it's a good idea to just move the axis back and forth to verify that it moves smoothly. So now we have verified that the y-axis also runs smoothly. So now we have we have finished aligning our ball screws. So now we'll just finish up by installing these two cable chain brackets. So now we're doing page 7 and we're doing this set axis now. So I'll start out by mounting my switch to this bracket. this screw in and thread on the tina. Now I'll just note the directions on the drawing and now I will insert the limit switch. And I will adjust adjust the placement of this switch according to the drawing.
Now we can insert a piece of slot cover on top of the wire just to protect it. And the end of this wire will exit through the end plate. Now we can put on the top plate. And again remember we have one linear guide which has not been fastened and one that has been fastened. I'll put my top plate on and again I have to note what direction it points in. And now I'll insert all of these loosely. Now we can move this back and forth a little bit. Now I'll tighten up all the screws on the fixed rail side. We can now tighten up one screw on the other side. This screw defines the distance between the linear rails. Now we'll have to align it. And so we tightened up this screw earlier, so I'll just loosen it up. Now I'll just hold the profile with my fingers. I'll slide this back and forth a bit. Now I can tighten up this screw. on to the next. Now I have to move this back. And I'll just check that the movement is smooth. And now we can tighten up the remaining screws. start off, if you are using one of our spindles, you'll have to insert now eight of these t nuts in the back side of the c -beam. Now we're ready to just connect the bearing blocks to the end plates. And when doing this, you have to make sure that the counter balls point, point outwards. Do the same thing for the other bearing block. Now we're ready to insert the ball screw into the assembly, and we'll just have to look at the drawing to determine which way this is going to go. I'm ready to put this on. I can just carefully slide this in and I'll make sure that the uh, ball screw nut has the screw holes pointing upwards. Now I can also take my wire here and put it through the hole in the end plate. Now I can carefully slide it in. Now I'll also put on the other end plate. And now I'm ready to fasten the end plates to the C beam. So I'll just insert all of the screws loosely. And I'll tighten them all up once they are all inserted. And I'll do the same thing for the other side. Now I'm ready to fasten the ball screw nut to the top plate. So I'll just carefully slide this on top of it. And now I'll insert and tighten the screws. Now I can slide this all the way to one end, and 
then I'll tighten these screws. And do the, I'll do the same thing in the other end. Now I can tighten up the remaining screws. Now I'll just move the top plate back and forth a little bit. Now the set axis has been completed. We're doing page 9 now. And we'll start out by installing these cable chains. And as you probably saw, we forgot to put the T-nuts into this seating. So now I'll put some uh, ball detent uh, and spring-loaded uh, replacements in here. Now I'm ready to grab my cable chain. And you can note in the manual how these end links are installed on it. I'll just put it up like this. Run right inside these screws. And now with the axis all the way to the front of its movement. we we'll just move the cable chain back like this and then move it a little bit to the front again so that we have some slag in the cable chain and I'll fasten it. Now I'll do the same thing for the x-axis. Put in these screws. And again, now I have to move the x-axis all the way to this end. And at this point I'll just make sure that it has some slack at the end. I can tighten up these screws. So now that the cable chains have been installed, we'll install the set axis. Now I can tighten up the set axis screws. So we're doing page 10 now, and I'll start by inserting all of my screws on the motors. Now I'm ready to put the spacers on.
Now I'll put the couplers onto the ends of the ball screws and I'll just make a few millimeters gap. Now I'm ready to put on the motors. So I'll just carefully slide the motor into the coupler. And then I'll start inserting the screws. Now I can tighten on both of the screws. And now I'll tighten the cover. Now I'll do the motor for the Z-axis. Again, I'll carefully slide it into the coupler. Now I'll tighten up the cover. So for the Z-axis we have the switch hidden inside of the C-beam with the wire exiting here. And we also have the motor wires exiting here. We tie those up with some zip ties and let them go into the cable chain. From the cable chain, they exit out through here and go into a bracket down here. So on the other side of the x-axis, we have the x-axis switch, which enters the side plate and goes into the C-beam. In this case, we were able to put a plug on it in this end, and then it goes into the bracket underneath here. And also the x-axis motor also goes directly into the bracket underneath here. The bracket then leads the wires neatly into the cable chain here where it doesn't foul the x-axis plate when it goes all the way to this end of its travel range. Then all of the wires go through the cable chain and enter over or exit over here. We also have the y-axis switch. We let the cable go through the bracket here, underneath the bracket, and then into the C-beam where we use a slot cover to cover up the wire. Then the wire exits over here, and we were again able to put a plug over here in this case. And we also see the left uh, y-axis motor, where the wire goes into the 2040 profile, and then exits on the other side, which is right about where all of the other wires exit. And then of course we have the final right side y-axis motor. And then all of our wires have about one meter of slack until we reach the black box. Thank you Rasmus for taking us through this complex build. I really uh, enjoyed watching and seeing your work and I hope all of you guys that will be assembling this machine will find it very useful uh, to use the video alongside with the written documentation. If you like the content of this uh, video and also would like to follow what we do, you can subscribe uh, below and then please help us spread the rumor about our different Piranha machines if you like them and you also would like to share that with your friends and buddies. Thank you very much. Have a great day.